piece of music we just heard was composed by an AI system called Richard Car. This is the system I am currently working on, and it is able to compose music uh, that sounds, I would say, natural and human. And I think we would also agree that the piece of music we just heard uh, sounded emotional, and somehow it wasn't really possible to say if it was composed by an AI system, by machine, or uh, by a human composer. Uh, it was trained with 25,000 pieces of music, mainly uh, cr um, classical music. And the task was simply to learn how to compose music that sounds human and natural and emotional, but uh, does not exist in the training set, of course. The actual task during the training was much simpler. It was uh, just to predict the next note. What does it mean? It means all what the model had to learn was to predict the next note given the previous notes. So it means the, the context, the context, uh, you can consider the context as previous notes, and the model had to learn to predict the right next note. Let me give you an example. Consider this motif. Actually, it is very likely that the next note would be a C. So it would sound so the model should, for example, learn to predict the C at that place. So it is actually very similar to how natural language processing models are trained. What they have to learn is also to predict the next word, given previous words. Of course, they don't work with uh, notes. They uh, have to learn words from the natural language. And uh, they predict the next word, uh, given the words that um, occurred previously in the document. Consider the sentence, today is a sunny day. And we want to predict the last word, day. Of course, the model has to know today is a day, and a day can be sunny. And so it is very likely that the last word is day. So generally, the basic idea behind uh, training models, uh, training AI models uh, with this concept is, if you have a model that is able to generate or to predict the next word given previous words, or in the case of music, to predict the next note given previous notes. So the model uh, must have learned some essential understanding of the data with which it has been trained. In the case of grammar, in the case of language, it would mean grammar, of course, and it would mean the meaning of the words and the relationships of the words to each other. In the case of music, it would mean uh, you know the rules of harmony, the um, music theory, and of course how the na nature of music is. that are very predictable. For example, today is a, a sunny day. The word is at the second position is, of course, very predictable. It could be was, of course, or today has, but the, the sentence would continue in a different way. But those words are very predictable because of the rules of the grammar. But there are also words or positions uh, in, in a text where it is open. It is open how the sentence will continue. For example, today is a beautiful Monday would also be correct. But we have some kind of new information if we, have, if we use the word Monday. So interestingly, we have a similar situation also for music generation. In music, there are uh, moments that are highly predictable. For example, the ends of the phrases or you know, the resolution of um, uh, dissonant harmonies. 
So at those moments, we have to be predictable because otherwise it would be very likely perceived as mistakes or um, something that, um, that doesn't really fit to the music. But on the other hand, if everything is predictable, the music, the result would be very boring because there is no creativity in it. So on those, model, on those moments, the model has to be somehow creative and unpredictable. They are open. We don't know how the music will continue. And those moments are actually the moments that are essential to, to make uh, a real art or to make something that, that sounds interesting. Let me give you an example. Consider this piece of music composed by Johann Sebastian Bach. This moment, what comes here, is actually not really predictable because we have a modulation. exactly where art happens because we don't know how the music will continue and uh, it continues actually in a way that uh, was not really predictable. You know, somehow predictability and creativity are opposed to each other because if something is predictable it can't be creative, right? And this is exactly the challenge for AI-based music composition system to know where they can be predictable and they has to be predictable and where they have to be, you know, creative or they have to compose something that, um, that wasn't really um, expected. I think I would agree that uh, this piece of music also sounds very natural. And it is again not possible to say if it was composed by an AI system or by a human composer. The question that arises here is actually how should we call the result? What is the meaning of the output? Can we call it art? I think the problem is the intention. To create to create meaning, to create art, to create anything, we need the intention to create. Even the very first cave painting in human history um, were intentional, because the artist wanted to communicate a meaning with the society. And even today, we can understand the meaning of the hunting scenes, for example. And I think to create art, we also need the intention. One might argue that there are pieces of music, especially in the modern music, uh, where uh, the artists make a huge use of randomness and something that is random can't be intentional. Of course, but on the other hand, even the randomness as a concept is intentional in that pieces of music. And intention, if we agree that intention is something that we need to create art, is, of course, something that AI system cannot give us. Let's assume we have solved all the 
technical issues and let's assume we have the perfect AI system that can compose music of highest possible quality, however it is defined, by just pressing the compose button. What is the personal meaning of the output? How can we personalize the output and how can we express ourselves in the result? So it is exactly the limitation and the problem with AI composed music, even if it is uh, even if it is perfect, actually. And I think that the answer to, um, to, to give a meaning to this result is collaboration. Without collaboration, of course, we can use the result of AI system as a huge library of non-existing pieces of music, because it's endless and every time we press the button, it would compose a new piece of music for us. But with collaboration, actually, we can compose something that has a meaning, that has a personal meaning, because it was our intention to create something new. And collaboration means using AI as counterpart and not as a tool like it is uh, nowadays. So, you know, AI systems are trained with huge amount of data and they learn their own assumptions about the data and they learn and develop their, their own um, perspective on data. And human artists, of course, have another perspective on data because they are hum humans and they uh, perceive the music in a different way, of course. And the goal is to bring those two perspectives together so that it is beneficial for both, so that, it is, uh, that we can compose something that uh, sounds natural, that sounds uh, emotional and is personal, and we can use the, the power, the the ability of AI system to deal with such amount, uh, such huge amount of data to improve and to extend our own creativity. And this is exactly the idea behind Richard Carr. So we are investigating new ways of interaction and collaboration between human artists and AI systems. Richard means in its Italian origin search. So actually it refers to a musical form of Baroque and Renaissance, and composers use this term to, you know, to, to find out the potential of a, of a theme or of a musical uh, idea or a structure. And I think it fits very good to the idea of AI-based music composition. Because together with human artists, uh, we can explore the musical universe and we can take different alternatives from the AI system and we can uh, even change the notes and we can, uh, you know, we can move in this universe uh, of different possibilities and uh, we can take different paths. And therefore, I think it's uh, Richard Cobb, as, as a term, fits very good to the, to the idea of exploring the musical universe. <laughs>